So we're walking the structure a little bit this way with our delay pattern by going with a shell than leg method, but not nearly as, as far as it might have been if we'd use a different method. But it'll be good. It'll be very good. His drop plan had better be right. Mark starts inside the shell with a band about 20 meters up. It runs about two-thirds the way around the shell, in the direction they want the towers to fall. The crew has pre-drilled 900 specially placed holes. You see, it's sort of a five-spot a five spot pattern. These holes work together. So this hole is responsible for this much concrete, this hole is responsible for this much concrete. But all of them work as sort of, they're all working together. And to make sure the towers drop where he wants them to, Mark introduces his own special technique, the addition of three vertical slots. The upper slot serves to cripple in on itself because of the, the hyperbolic shape of, of the structure. The shell will fold in towards the direction of the center slot and continue the rotational tilting of the structure in the intended direction of the fall. A split second after the charges in the shell detonate, the dynamite loaded into the legs will go off. As with the shell, only 60% of the legs will be loaded to create movement in the direction of the explosions. Drop down here, I can, I can take some stuff off. Drop down just a little bit. Mark's foolproof plan must address every hazard, which includes flying debris. When Mark detonates the explosives, it will send chunks of concrete hurtling at high speeds toward the adjacent buildings. Mark devises a simple solution to prevent this. Covering the slots and tower legs with two layers of chain link fencing and geotextile fabric after the crew loads the explosives. fencing stops the large pieces of debris from flying off. The fabric traps the smaller pieces. Tom Dowd is building the protective barrier. 